I don't think we would have got as far if we didn't have each other because we can't take turns to have sleepless nights. Yeah. And then the other one supports the other one and it's like, oh my God, I didn't sleep because this is on my mind or, you know, something businessy. And then we just, you know, you've got support and, you know, yeah, you've always got that support. Yeah. You have it, that mm. panic of, oh my God, we did the right thing. Well, how is this going to work? Or, Right, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast chat. We've got two very special guests today. We've got Carol and Vicky. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So, I did. Yeah. So I think I messaged you was it a few weeks. Maybe a couple of months. I think it was we'll a few months. Yeah. 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 And I know, yeah, Carol. And yeah. Um, yeah, a few months ago, we've been trying to organise it, but yeah. Managed to get there, yeah. yeah, we did. And like I said, yeah, it's a new experience having two guests on, so I'll do my best. Right, <laughs> yeah. all right. As long as you remember our names, it's yeah. fine. Carol, Vicky. <laughs> easy, easy. Right, so what I'm going to get you to do, which I didn't prep you for, is introduce yourself to the viewers and the listeners. If you read something for the first time, how would you do that? Hi, I'm Carol. Uh, I am one half of Creative Foot. Let's say that. Little duo. I look after the marketing, so a marketing director. We still don't know what our roles are, do we, really? Everything. So I look after all the marketing side of things. Yeah, I'm uh, the better half of Creative Fudge. <laughs> and, uh, and I do the branding and the design. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of us in a nutshell. Is that? Yeah, it's good. That's great. Maybe if you can have it back with a ball. Oh. Or sit forward. So it's, it's yes. Oh, yeah, sit forward. It'd be fine. Yeah, that's cool. So the three facts. This is the yeah, you said it was stressed. Yeah, this is more than another panicked call to Vicky. I don't have three facts. What kind of facts? And you get me fine. So, yeah, we are coming up with a plan. We're going to have what, we have one each. Yeah, yeah. and then, a, and then we've got a shared one. Good, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like well, that. Yeah, yeah. Six, six facts, Vicky. Yeah. And <laughs> um, well, yeah, a platform things that you can't really see. You know, struggling. <laughs> no, we're the ones After hours, <laughs> and a podcast and dad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's another podcast. So. I think the fact that probably most people don't know, did in my previous role when I first left university, I used to teach fashion designers to use like software and did that all over the world. So taught some pretty impressive designers. So Maria Grash Vogel, she's like runway, uh, Stella McCartney, we had Burberry. So I'm quite fortunate enough to meet all of these people with my first role just traveling around the world. Lots of big gap, I used to teach, I used to teach m and everything from huge retailers to yeah, some pretty cool designers. So that's cool, yeah. yeah. And I just get that job then. <laughs> <laughs> and after my master's, did a master's at university in computers. So for fashion designers specifically. And then just got my job in London and they did everything. I called Electra, they're a French company. And they do everything from graphite design through to furniture design, right through to urban space. Oh, so right. everything in between that's like fabric oriented. So car interiors, everything. I mean, it's just huge. Huge business and got like my tier subsidiaries around the world. So we used to just teach all over from Germany to China to Hong Kong, America. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a cool experience straight out of uni, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah, definitely. It opens your eyes to the real world. Yeah, exactly. And just stuck on a plane and we used to have to travel every. They were at the head office was Paris. They also had to have head office in Bordeaux. Um, and New York was kind of always. Did you do first fans? You know, always a reflective class. <laughs> yeah, class to China is not fun. Not yet. Yeah. Once you get there, it's fine. Mm. Right, Vicky, what's uh, your Mine is that my real name is Francisca. Okay. So uh, not many people in the world. It is, yeah. <laughs> so my real name is Francisca. Should I not touch you, you know? then? <laughs> <laughs> you not touch me? <laughs> my, yeah, so it's Francisca Victoria Cabot. Okay. Because my, I'm Mallorcan, my dad's Spanish. But... Uh, Everyone calls me Vicky here because when I, I was saying to Carol this morning, when I was at primary school, everyone used to call me Fanny Botty. Changed that immediately. <laughs> but it means everything on like the doctors in my bank account is Francisca. So I've been into the hospital before when, when I had an accident. I was a bit delirious and I was like, it's Vicky. No, it's not. It's Francisca. It could be Simpson. It could be Cabot. So I've got so many different names that I think people have thought. I've, I've just been a bit fraudulent at one point. <laughs> Banking's tough, isn't it? <laughs> oh, banking is tough, yeah. So, yeah, so I am Francisca because in Spain you get called after your grandma. So when I go back over there, I'm Chisca. But, yeah. Maybe. A lot. 
<laughs> I've got, I like to have different personalities. That's the other fact. <laughs> that must be confusing when you grew up. Little surely. Well, I, I grew up in Spain originally, and then when I came over, I think my mum she she was the one who called me Vicky to begin with because I think when you're four or five year olds, Francisca's quite a big name. Spell um, it as well. That'd be a nightmare. Everyone always spells it wrong. Always. Mm-hmm. And also. Francisca. Pardon? Francisca. Francisca. So it's Fran and then a C I S C A. Um, and then my, the school that I came to, and I'm still furious with my mum for putting me out on Mallorca because it would have put a bit nice scope there, but went to Newtown schools. So I think she wanted me to, to fit in a little bit more yes. because obviously being half Spanish and stuff yes. was, was a bit different. So, so. you've got a Spanish passport then? No, but I can get one and my, my children can get one as well. Oh, so, that's good. Yeah. That's handy, isn't it? Yeah. Especially like Brexit and stuff like that. I know, I know. I keep thinking I must do that, but it's not much to do this with. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. It just gets longer and longer. It gets and longer. longer, especially with the bank. Carol's got me with a to do list for, for everything. <laughs> I've been waiting a year. <laughs> yeah. What's your joint one then? Oh, yeah. The, the, it's a bit single white female. Carol followed me around London for 20 months. Yeah, just told me. So I'm in So I think we both went to art college a year apart. Yeah, in, in Carlisle. In Carlisle. Yeah. And then we both went to London. So we're just thinking our whole career past personal life has been very identical. Just a little bit removed. So we both went to our, um, our college. He did graphic design. I was in the foundation art college, uh, art degree. And then we both went to London to pursue our careers. Yeah. But little did we know that my boyfriend was... Vicky's boyfriend's best so friend, sweet. but we never met. And then we moved around London because you tend not to stay in one place. Hmm. So we, we moved around the same and lived like the streets same. away from each other for about 20 years, like Literally. almost identical. And then Carol moved back up before me because she, she'd had a son. And then I decided to move up on and my girls because we've got all family up here. And I moved in next door to Carol's dad. I'm sorry. And he's this is been really five, stalkery, he, isn't it? <laughs> she has been stalkery, yes. <laughs> She's just got creased on it. So yeah, my dad invited the new neighbours round for coffee and yeah, I must meet them and there's a young couple in the bean to look. And so I thought, all oh, right, okay, I'll never know who they are. And then Vicky walked in with a family and I was like, I know you. And you were like, I know you did go to our college. And then once we started to like kind of ruffle and everything, I was still having that style. Like, oh, you know, and everything was just, you know, I lived in Crystal Palace. Well, I just lived down the road. It was just yeah, that everything, wasn't it? And that was it. That's that was so it. And then we went to the pub and came friends. Yeah. Came friends. Oh, that's very yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. No. So we wondered so if I hadn't, you know, if you hadn't moved next door, then would we have ever met? Yeah. <sighs> met back up, we would have been again, kind of moving around Carlisle and... So, yeah, this creative hutch, like, as it exists now, wouldn't exist if I hadn't been from next door to Derek. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad, yeah. isn't it? Like, have one decision yeah. and, like, change your whole life, isn't it? Like, yeah. if you didn't make that decision to move into that house, yeah. where would you be around? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're saying. It's quite it's sliding doors. Sliding doors. Sliding doors, doors, doors. Yeah. Just wonder where we would be. But I said, we've got similar friends, so potentially mm. you would end up in the same place. I don't mm. know. It gets a little bit. Existential with yeah, stuff. That deep, isn't it? <laughs> I've had a little coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So that is that is quite interesting, you know. I would yeah. never expected that. Do a lot of people know that? Or not really? I mean, I do say how well, Carol just stalks me all the time. I think that's that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Restraining all in it. My own business partner just sits upstairs. Yeah. So, so <laughs> what, what were you both like growing up before you met then? Like going through school and that, that kind of thing. What did you enjoy doing in your free time? What were you like? Very different. We just had a conversation before and I think we are like chalk and cheese. We were yeah. then. But yeah, very similar now, aren't we? Yeah. Like in mm. everything. But I was really, really sporty, outgoing, sporty, just everything on a whim. I was rebellious. I mean, yeah, anything that mum said I wasn't allowed to do, I was sneaking out of the house. I was just, everything was small for me and I wasn't really academic. Uh, you know, I always had to try at school, very much at primary school or secondary school. Just had to try really hard to do it. But sport, I've played squash and skied. I swam for the county, you know, I mean, everything like that. But it was always having a party and playing and, you know, any chance at all to be out, to be more normal teenagers do. Whereas you Did were... you sit for the board of readers? So did I. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> Do not know that. I went to friends. Swam with them. Do you? Yeah, to an old cryptic community. Don't forget that. This is weird. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, no. I'm six years old. It never ends, honestly. We will be 
Yeah. Even sitting at the pub and we'll be like, oh, where can Steve just stop me? Always oh, stuck in the same prints. <laughs> yeah. Not today. No, not, <laughs> not today. That was um, on purpose. And I, I think I was quite similar in the sense of being sporty, like playing hockey and skiing. <laughs> <for me. laughs> but we were in the country, so I, I, was, I was just really boring. Mm. Like I didn't, I wasn't rebellious because I hate not, I, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, so I didn't ever want to get into trouble. Yeah. So until I went to university, I just dull as dishwater, totally. Mm. Well, I think I was, you know, I was nice, so it was probably fun. Yeah. But there was no rebellious side to me, and I just liked doing art and crafts, and so I was always mm. doing work, basically. What, so. what kind of like, arts and crafts did you like doing them growing up? Because like, when I was growing up, when I was like, I used to like drawing footballers and stuff, and I'd sell like pieces of footballers to kids at school, like 2P or make paper films. Oh, really? So, so I'd film and sell them for like P and all that kind of thing. entrepreneurial. Yeah. Um, and I used to love drawing like houses, football stadiums, football teams. It was a theme. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't like drawing now, though, but it's more like creative in a different way. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was just asking what kind yeah. of stuff do you like doing? No, I can't draw for mm. toffee or whatever the same Dance is. wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but it was always cutting and sticking. It's the same when I was did my A level art, where they liked fine artists. And I was saying to Carol, we never really got on with the, the teachers and I because they wanted you to draw like like a photograph, whereas I was like, Doing big collages and sticking, you know, very David Carson. So it was always graphic design style and I always wanted to be Kate AD. So I was really into photography and, and, mm. and kind of, even I can't spell writing and stuff like that. So that was a creative it's element. Well, well <laughs> planning, it does help. It does it. <laughs> I'm always putting graphics above social media and you know, you post it yeah. and yeah. Carol's like, hey, how, how many <laughs> red coming? coming? Two red and three. <laughs> three <four. laughs> Well, that's how I started. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. So, what did you want to be or what did you want to do when you were younger? Carol's so I wanted to be... Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Stalker. I wanted to be a vet. Yeah. I have quite balls and my son's exactly the same. That's what he wants to do now. But for specifically exactly the same, big cats. Wanted to mm. move away, I just thought, or, or in the ocean, on this ship, you know, like, and just diving and anything like that, just looking after animals. Mm. But then... Yeah, and once I got to school and realised that wasn't that great at chemistry or biology was all like, but the chemistry, I was just saying, yeah, I'm not going to get this. Mm. And then it's just all design. I did like drawing and I like to draw things and still lines and things like that. And that's kind of where I'm better at the creative side than yeah. the anything that Vicky does. Uh, but yeah, so I definitely wanted to move in and be a designer. Because yeah. it's a bit of a different career path, isn't it? Back to just well, yeah, in the science, you know, when they were like, you're not going to get your science, Carol, because I was just not academic until I went to university. And then I excelled because I was passionate about what I did and I love computers, anything to do with digital, just really passionate about it. So as soon as I went, I got a degree in knitting. So knitting. textile design is what I did, so I can oh. literally knit anything. And that was what my final degree was in. And you had to do really technical and like mathematics for the knitting. It's really quite technical because it was Master of Science. So your exams were like four hours of technical know-how in knitting and stuff, things like that. So, I mean, I really excelled in that. I loved it. Can I ask why we don't have any branded knitted jumpers? It was oh, called. It was called t-shirts. Yeah, them t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Them t-shirts. Running in bits. Running in bits. Yeah. yeah. On the spin, uh, machine now, but yeah, it's been eight o'clock in the morning, or about six o'clock in the morning, knitting away on the knitting machine for my final degree. So yeah, but yeah, you know, definitely wanted to be a designer once I realised I wasn't very academic. What were you looking? Yeah, the, well, I wanted to be, I wanted to be KAD for such a long time. I just, like, I wanted to be a photographic journalist. So I just liked that idea, but then obviously I realised I was quite scared of and anything. <laughs> I'm so yeah, yeah. 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 Didn't see how long you were saying to take selfies before. <laughs> 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 no, I don't like photographs with me. Yes. Um, so yeah, and then from I would I did photography a level, and then I really started get passionate about computers as well, and realizing that I could do the graphic design on there. So I just kind of amalgamated the two really. But it was always photography to begin with was my passion. So like a photography journalist. Mm. What what is that specifically? And is that the someone who takes photos and sells them to like the papers or articles and that no. they all? Well, originally it was I did look at the RAF because you can go into the intelligence there really? and do a lot of photography. Oh. Did you? Oh. <laughs> 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 In the same now, I'm <laughs> 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 
Really? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. if, oh, if we'd join the RAS, you'd retire at like 40. You would yeah. know, be retired by now. Oh. Our past could take different, yeah. different things. But yeah, so it's, it's a lot of different things, but it was rather than being in front of the camera, I'd be behind the camera and a lot of it wouldn't just be photographs. It would be like video and filming and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. It's, I suppose, I don't know, at that age, I wouldn't even known that was a career path to take or anything like that. When, when did you kind of think, oh, I can do the graphic design? I think it's when I was figuring out what, I didn't decided not the RAF wasn't right and then went to see what I wanted to do as a degree. So I went to Carlisle College first mm. and did the foundation graphic design and then I just, yeah, really liked and it was as websites were starting to come, mm. you brand new where you used to put on a website and it used to take like 10 minutes yeah. to just load. So I thought I wanted to get into that. So that's why I started, I went to Leeds University, did graphic design there. No, I, I remember when I was at school, there was these websites everybody used to have was like somebody's up something dot. Oh, I can't even remember now, but it was open spot dot P something like sort of them. I don't know. But yeah, what, we what also, content was on the was? Oh, <laughs> 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 like you could create your own website and then it was yeah. like dot pics or something. I don't know. Oh, that's, nice. a, that's a terrible story. I'm terrible example. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just remind myself at primary school, we always used to create like those websites and stuff. Yeah. Oh, we, 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 see, when we were at primary school, websites just for the army at that point, I think. Really? It's only just been invented. Mm. So then you both went to university then. So was that always what you wanted to do or was it just wanted to go out and earn money? Because like you went to college, obviously at 18, it's a big decision, isn't it? Like, do you want to do for the rest of your life? Like not a lot of people know. And you know, my parents especially, but my dad's done the same job pretty much since he graduated, you know what I mean? Whereas I feel like a lot of people change their careers mm. as they go along. So what was the mindset at that age 18? First? I think it was a lot different back then as it is today. There was no, apart from, you know, at school, it was like, well, do you want to be a nurse, mm. a beautician, an electrician, or do I mean, literally that was... That was your choice, is it? You know, going up at Trinity School, I don't know if you found the same. Whereas mm. now it's like, you know, there was the college, but those were the courses that you went to do. And I thought, I don't want to be a hairdresser. But my mum was just like, well, you're just going to have to, you know, just get out of Carlisle. I think my mum really said, Look, go to uni, you love art, and then just go and pursue that and see your creative side and see that takes you but from obviously Carlisle. And just, but yeah, there was no, you know, it was just starting work and working up like there is now. You know, there's graduate things now, isn't there? And there's different courses that you can do and work your way up within companies back then. There's just opportunities like that. So you kind of had to go or you just started working at 16 as an apprentice. I think it's different. Sorry. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, I think it's different now because I always say with our kids, their job probably doesn't exist at now. So I think, you know, you, and because of the internet and your phones and things like that, you've got so many opportunities to do literally anything you want and you know even start up things that don't even as i said don't even exist but then because there wasn't the technology you would just have what you could physically have that was near you so going to university was that way to just be able to open more doors i think um more yeah definitely so where did you go to uni i went to leeds, leeds. oh leeds. yeah oh, which was really cool. yeah it's really really nice i wanted to be somewhere that was far enough away but still quite close yeah. And it had a really good course as well, so it's really good. Yeah, I had a school in Rocha, so that was like where the textile was. Pat from in uh, Scotland, there was two big universities for the textile side, so yeah, not far away. Worked in Leeds. Huddersfield is where my husband is from. Oh, St. Really? Tony's. <laughs> so, how was Huddersfield then from Carlisle? It was only a couple of. Oh, it was just kind of just like the same as yeah. it's just cross country. Mm -hmm. What made you pick that up? It was just, just again course. because of the course. Yeah. You know, you could go to London, like the School of Fashion, mm -hmm. the School of Art, and stuff like that. Um, or there was one in, up in Scotland, like you know, just in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, you know, so that's not for me. You don't want to go from a small city to an even smaller mm -hmm. town. Um, and then this field was, yeah, huge. It's a big, big university and got good. Good opportunity. Yeah. So I went to Cardiff, which is oh, did you? as far away from home as possible. Yeah. So I was like, so my mum would have a car surprise me. <laughs> going like five, six hours away. It's an amazing place though. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I'd recommend it to everyone. Like, see, it's capital C, so lots going on. Yeah. But small enough to know your way around. No, no, no. And that kind of thing. Did you not fancy staying? I did, yeah. I mean, back in lockdown. Oh, um, right. Yeah. So I had to restart my business and stuff. Yeah. And um, in lockdown. But yeah, I love it. I go down. I'm going down next week as well, but it's one of them places where, for me, like I grew up there from like 18 to yeah. 24 ish, something like that. And it's been like, that's that stage of my life done. I really need to go to my next stage now, mm -hmm. but yeah, I love Cardiff. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. And Welsh people are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Friendly, aren't they? 
Yeah, we've got a couple of French clients, French and Welsh clients, <laughs> and we were driving down trying to find them. And I'm not even going to pronounce any more email trying to, yeah, listen, you know, when you can get Google to pronounce where they're like, it's like, no, just spell it out. Nobody speaks Welsh, though. No. Like, I think I know two words, Borada, which is good morning, and then Araf means slow, because on all the speed bumps, it's so slow. And, That's Andy. Yeah, pretty much. He's got him twice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Welsh. So how did you both find uni? Did you enjoy it? Did you like, feel like you grew up? Did you learn a lot? Obviously, you don't use your degree yeah. anymore, do you, the corrupts? Really? Well, not, not, yeah, but it was designed, yeah, so yeah. obviously coming into the creative mm. industry, that's helped. Um, but I absolutely did that's right. You mm. come in from a car and it's so small. <laughs> um, all I knew, you know, left my boyfriend at the time and it was big move and then again. <laughs> but so I just went. the time, it's the end of the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should it's never okay. leave, I'm going to be with you forever. <laughs> it's best, best. <laughs> came down and fresh as we did, just ignored. <laughs> I was just like, why can't you not to visit you? Yeah, my friends. I still am friends with them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was just lying here not so long, just literally drew a line to Carla. And then the yeah. phone, my mum, and she didn't, <laughs> would always be sticky notes on their phone in the whole to residence. Carol, your mum's called again. Your mum's called again. I'm just having an absolute blast. Yeah. Just thrived in it and just. It's so important, I think, to move away from home, isn't it? Even if it's uh, six months a year, just to change the scene, because you do grow the glass and don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's your independence and that kind of thing. I think that don't you know this? Yeah, and I think you know I loved I loved my course. I was saying, kind of, I was like, I was always in, always working, you know, because I just really liked it. But the, you know, everyone that I met was from Birmingham or London, and they had the rebellious, like you know, childhood. And I was a straight laced one, and it was just so nice meeting so many different people. I think that was for me the the biggest thing that I really loved about university, and it gives you the confidence, you know, to. Become the person you want to be, which I think sometimes when you come from a smaller town or a smaller city, you want to fit in. You don't want to stand out because you get picked on if, if you're a little bit different or anything. So it, it was nice to go to university and meet lots of different people and just be who you want to be. And, and that gives you a lot of confidence, mm. more so than getting a degree, I think. Yeah. You can reinvent yourself, can't you, when you go to university? Because mm. when I went anyway, I didn't know anyone in Cardiff. You know what I mean? I just went to Hall's residence. Mm. They were eight people and just did my own thing. And like you say, you, you do find out what you like, what you don't like. And well, after 18, it's added four years, 18 to 22. And you think, yeah, I'll change a lot in that four years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because you think at 18, you've got it all figured out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, you tell. No, I think it's, I think I would advise everyone to leave e wherever they live, e even if they live in London, to go somewhere else. Because mm -hmm. even, you know, if you're in a city, well, when we lived in London, you just live in a little pocket. So it's like you live in a small town, really. So I think everyone should leave yeah. where they come and then go back. But yeah. And then what was the plan then, finishing uni? Oh, I mean, what what was what was it? you had a, had a perfect plan. You knew exactly what you were going to be doing. <laughs> Executing it perfectly. You don't know, you know very well. The plan is not a strong point. <laughs> it's not any point. That's why we've got just, Debbie. Just, just do it. We'll just take a risk and do it. Um, yeah, well, just... I, on naively, I think I thought, I'm just going to go and get a job and become a designer. And then once I start interview after interview after interview, mm -hmm. and just, it was no, 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 and, you know, and I'm just like, oh, this is impossible. And you haven't got experience. Oh, no, because I've just come out of university. Oh, we're looking for somebody with a years experience minimum. Well, how do you get that to become a designer if you've just left university? Um, so that was really difficult. That was a bit of a night. And then I thought, well, I'm just doing a and I keep studying. And yeah. um, so I just went straight back into and did my master's degree then. So I did my four years first, then time to go a break, went to Australia, travelled around, came back and just started the next course. So, and then I realised that, yeah, kind of the technology side that I really loved and that's what got me to that first position. But yeah, so the designer side of becoming a designer was totally, that ended pretty quickly thinking, God, it's really, really difficult difficult to get in because there's not many jobs yeah it's um, just, it, is, it is hard to get into i think isn't it and especially maybe these days you've got no experience you could create your own like instagram profile and do designs yeah, on there exactly. and create your own kind of portfolio like say become freelance you know there's a yeah. lot of freelance system designers but it just wasn't again something that you thought about setting your business up especially not no 22 or 21 or something no. Well, you couldn't, like nowadays, like you say, you can set up be a freelance and market yourself on your phone, mm -hmm. so you can get out to a lot more people, and then you couldn't. So, yeah, I mean, when I, <clears throat> when I left uni, went straight down to London, and the jobs that I had, <laughs> just to, you know, I applied for a lot, and it was that whole, set, you know, the same thing again. 
So I think I, I, I was a cold caller for ink cartridges. It didn't last very wow. long. I tried for t- to people and never sold anything. <laughs> okay, so the good friends on the phone. <laughs> yes, of course, really script. And then, and then sit, pass them on to the salespeople. And it lasted about a week because I just felt really, I couldn't Great. do it. It was awful. And then, you know, the people outside the top shop who said, oh, do you want to be a model or whatever? Tried that for a day. Mm-hmm. Didn't do that. Uh, so I had some really bad jobs. Can um, I build in though, I'd imagine. Something. <laughs> um, I ended up getting a, my first design job down in Gorin on Thames, which is near Reading. So I commuted all the way from North London down to Reading. So I'd get up at quarter past five every morning and do a two hour train journey. But we worked right next to George Michael, so I enjoyed that. I'm seeing for coffee at lunchtime. So that, you know, that, that was what you had to do. But from like my second year at university, I did actually have a plan. The only time. And my focus was to always be a creative director. That's all I wanted to be. So, so that first job that I got, I would, my friends would be calling me up like Rachel at 9.30 on a Friday night going, we're in the pub, where are you? And I was two hours away down in Reading working and I'd have to get the last train back. Be fair, first thing in the morning. So that, that was kind of, again, just really boring, but that was my plan for quite a few years. I just wanted to get, to be a creative director. Why well, creative because just all the people I admired, you know, I just, I just thought, you know, I want to learn all, all the things and, and be at that position where, you know, like we were saying before, I had such good, like such big ideas about certain things, but you need lots of different people to execute it. So the creative director for me, I thought like, you know, I could talk to the clients, but really kind of see my ideas come to fruition because, you know, I can't draw, I can't do, I couldn't do video, I couldn't do certain things. So it was just a way for me to, to keep being being creative really yeah would you say you find self aware as a person and knowing your strengths and your weaknesses where you need help your direction kind of thing yeah I think that's been a learning thing but yeah I think the more so I've always known what my weaknesses were mm. but it takes a long time to feel confident to know what your strengths are I think mm-hmm. yeah no yeah, interesting so then what was like the career path then obviously until you met properly and then you set up a bunch. What was that, sorry? That career? The career path, because you've both had various different jobs you, before you set up each other this nearly seven years, is it? Mm-hmm. What? Jobs along the way. Again, well, from my first, you know, getting that job at like a totally French company, so I was there quite a long time. Um, so I started off, you know, teaching designers, traveling the world and then moving into the marketing. So that was my first glimpse into marketing. So they put me through my CIM. Uh, which is a marketing course in professional diploma in London. So then I started studying and then they moved me to head office. So then I was working for Paris, but still living in London. So that's when I had to do a lot of travel. But my, yeah, my team was in Paris. So that kind of moved me into the market. And then I really like, enjoyed that side of things. And I thought, yeah, this is more what I understand, what I really want to go into. So that's kind of my change from becoming a designer to then, yeah, trying to sell the products and the services that we sold to our clients and stuff. So that was really good. Um, and I was there, oh yeah, I must have been there 15 years, so just kind of moved up the ranks. Yes. And then had my little boy, and then that's what brought me back. Mm-hmm. That's what made me leave London. Yeah, so on LinkedIn, you were there for a while. And I was interested because like being there for LinkedIn, it's like 14 to years. Like, so yeah. It's a long time to be at one company, isn't yeah. it? So you must have really yeah. enjoyed it. It must have gave you a lot of responsibility. Yeah, because I moved up and then I was marketing manager for, you know, managing the head office for all of the subsidiaries. So I was managing big teams across the whole world. China, so there was always lots of travel, which kept me never. I'm never really at home in London. I just lived out of a suitcase because every week I had to be somewhere else, um, which I love. I just love that spontaneity, just to get up and think, oh, where am I today? Oh, I'm in China, and then I've got to go to Italy. So that's kept me going, and that's when I was happy there. And then when I had my little boy, it's like, I can't afford to stay in London. So you come back to your parents, just like what Ricky did. And then I worked at Amsterdam Watson. Yeah, so, so yeah, and in marketing there, and then that's kind of what me moved me into that social media side of things. So I looked at the digital side. So I looked after their website and all of their social media, uh, content creation, that, and I really loved that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. really like this side of things. And uh, I like speed of things and I just like learning any new technology that's coming out, you know, anything. Just want to see, you know, like you've got a thirst for knowledge. I just want to go back and constantly mm-hmm. just learn. I think that's one thing when people leave school or university is 
like the same with you go to the gym, isn't it? You exercise your muscles to grow them all, get them fitter or better. But a lot of people stop like exercising the brain, mm-hmm. not like learning, mm-hmm. even listen to podcasts or audio yeah. books or reading books and that kind of thing. Some people are just happier if you like to just coast along and not consume or learn anything new. Whereas like I said, if you love learning, consume so much information and you are absorbing all this thing that you can apply yeah. in, in real life situations, which is quite cool. I, mean, I wanted to go back and do my doctor's. And my mum's like, this is ridiculous. You've been in university for <laughs> like a year at college, then four years at university. And then I went on to do my master's and then I wanted to do my doctor's, which is like three or four years. And I'm like, that's 10 years. You could have been the vet. <laughs> you could have been a doctor or a surgeon. And then they're like, I can't afford it to, you know, payroll. You mm. might go to study. Um, and it's still really fine. My list, my list is to get help. Really? Yeah. That's I really, really yeah. want to do it. Never do. I'll just be since I said I don't know what it is, but that is a huge, you know, people want to run a marathon. It's not enough. Just like take it off. You just go all on the letters after my name. How, how, how straightforward would that be then? Which magic words? Really? Oh, well, <laughs> you don't need to sleep. Lot. I don't care. You start sleeping. You yeah, have fine. Loads of time. Yeah. You can do it, you know, obviously in your own time and do it part time. Mm. Hello, friends have done that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you'd have to want to do it. You know, mm. Is it just a big chunk of all of your social life? To do mm. that, but yeah, you can do it in your own time. I don't have to go to university, you can do it online. Well, like open university, yeah. Then, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely something I just need to find the subject that I want to do. Mm-hmm. What have you got in mind? It'll definitely have to be something creative on the marketing side of things. Dr. Cow, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be no stop. No, that's got a little ring to it, isn't it? You never hear the end of that, though. Never. No, that and then you said the company paid for your marketing chartered yes. thing. Mm-hmm. How important do you think that is then as a marketer? I didn't think it was important at all. It wasn't something that I ever, you know, just wanted to learn marketing. I was interested in it, but I didn't know kind of the foundations and you know, the behaviours around I love that the customer bid, buying behaviours and all of that side of things I was really excited about. Um, so I didn't think it was the qualification I wasn't really fussed about. I just knew I needed to do that to progress mm-hmm. working for the company so that I had enough, you know, could share the knowledge that I'd gained and everything rather than just yeah. <laughs> and said, yeah, no, we just still doing great stint for now, you know, helping our clients write new plans and kind of mm-hmm. know that. But yeah, you know, to get the qualification I wasn't that fussed. But you know, when they said, Oh, we'll pay you and put you through that. That's a great opportunity because it was thousands of pounds. So, oh, yeah. yeah, you need to be a chartered, whatever. Yeah, then my dad's a chartered accountant, and when he was training, the company he was working for paid for that. Yeah. Company. And now, than that, anyone who's got the chartered marketing service interested to to find out, like, yeah, how you found it. And that really, yeah, I know, I love the course. It was yeah. really, it was, that was really intense, and that took over. <laughs> that was a glimpse into uh, doing my doctor's. Office. Every Monday and Thursday, and then writing and oh yeah, on the night time and everybody was out. You know, yeah. like Friday, Saturday. Sorry, I've got an assignment to do. So, like my friends were the accountants and they were all studying for their exams. So we were kind of all doing it together, mm. which helped. Small sacrifice things. Exactly. Mm. Term, yeah. What were you, Vicky? What was your past life up to create much? The jobs apart from cold corners. Apart <laughs> from <laughs> <laughs> trying to sell it, eating cartridges. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, after my job in Reading, I got one in, in London and uh, I was there for about six years and that was really good because I, I was a web, I, I was doing the digital side of things because mm-hmm. at university I started to get in a real love, I did Dreamweaver and stuff like that and Flash. I'm oh. a weaver. I love Dreamweaver. Yes. All the web developers are cringing now. But it, they're all style programs. So you used to have, you know, back in the day websites where you would have a loading animation sure. because it would take so long for the website to load that you would like try and entertain people. <laughs> so <laughs> I loved doing Flash. I did loads of Flash courses. And I had quite a lot of maths in, so I was always quite packed because I'm terrible at maths. So I did like a big opening animation for the BBC Proms and worked with Hagen Das and stuff like that. So that was a really good company to work for. <laughs> And then worked my way up in a couple of other different agencies around London. And then my now husband and I decided to go travelling for a year. So now what, husband, what happened to the one before? Oh, I'm <laughs> Odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was my boy- then boyfriend. With my now husband. <laughs> if I said then boyfriend. <laughs> All right, see, I've had two husbands. <laughs> 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 I was like, is that an inside joke? Or? Like, well, how would I embrace it? My husband, my husband, husband, and I thought we were boyfriend, boyfriend then. (laughs) Um, 
we decided to go because I was at an agency that was just really toxic mm. and I didn't know how to get out of it. It wasn't a really nice place to work. The clients, it was in hedge funds and finance. The clients were just... Unsold. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't very nice people. So I just needed to take time off. So we decided, like, luckily in London, if you have a house, it earns quite a lot of money without you doing anything. So I sold my, my then house and we travelled around the world to that. And then I came back and one of my best friends down there, Chris, was a freelancer and we decided to open up an agency called Monogram. So we worked on that for a couple of years and then I had my two girls and decided to move up so I sold my part of the business to him. Vowing never to have another business ever again. (laughs) (laughs) Get up within six months. Yeah, that was Mm -hmm. it, done. Um, So it was just working. I worked my way um, up like Carol did really. You know, I would do a lot of long hours, got to creative director, but digital. So I did a lot of the digital. Carol and I had kind of swapped because I was digital first. And then I just, I mean, coding is not my thing. I can't spell for a start. So, and I really enjoyed the strategy side of design and all that design stuff. So then I went on to graphic design and became creative director that way and then got business. So it's the path in a nutshell. So then when you said you worked at like agency in London, it was toxic. Do you reckon that's probably how much you are today thinking? I wouldn't want my place of work to be anything like that, anything. I think there's about three agencies I've worked for in London mm-hmm. that has taught me how not to work with people, you know, build, not, but they, they all had success. It was all successful agencies, mm-hmm. but actually, you know, this one that I'm talking about, you, the hours were 8.30 till 5.30. But if you left at 5.30, you would, the looks that you got from the boss, even, you know, we, we often got, quite a high volume of work. So we would be in work till 11 o'clock at night, sometimes one o'clock in the morning working, which I used to enjoy. I miss that. I really, I used to enjoy kind of a big team of us working till late at night or weekends. But if, even if you're into one o'clock in the morning, if you weren't in at 8.30 the next day, again, you get reprimanded and there just wasn't any respect or appreciation and everybody, you know, I was ahead of at the time and all the heads of had meetings and we all happened to be women. And, you know, I can be emotional, but we'd all be in tears on a Monday morning because she, our boss would make us so worried and nervous, you know, and the time before that, work with someone again, who was just a very toxic person to work for. So yeah, I think it's just made me realise, and I know you've been in similar positions that, you know, it, it doesn't, like people are in work for 80% of the the, the day aren't they and you know it really impacts their personal lives so if we have people we've got a great team at the moment and we want them to feel happy and com- comfortable and confident and you know ha- know that they're not going to take it home and because it can impact your health and everything so yeah teach us what you want them to do yeah, and did you always want to have your business I, I did when I said monogram uh, but <laughs> now I don't <laughs> It used to be a <laughs> to work in a warehouse. So, <laughs> no but, stress, no pressure. No, I think that's what I think. We were going to fly and work with, and I said, oh, it's my dream job. And she went, what? She's driving. And I said, and we went past the Nat, listen, like, it's well, I just want to <laughs> sit drive this together. And I just go, shh, and lift, manual labor. Mm. So we got her a, a yellow jacket for the first day. Oh. Like a high vis high vis Dreams do come true. Uh, yeah. One day. One day, she could be in the warehouse. <laughs> um, yeah, what was the... Saying, do you always want to have your own business ship oh, monogram, yeah. Yeah, and I think I did because I think whenever I've worked in a in a, a business, again, a lot of the time, the people who are managing it are just, it, 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 there's just too much stress. And I think, you know, it's you're expected to work late and do things like this. So I think having your own business means that, you, you know, you've, all, you've got to adhere to what the clients want but you can run it in your own way. So I don't think I could ever go back to not having one really. About you no. Until I forced you to come in. But yeah, no, I also, when I um, worked in Leeds and I just always kept saying to my friend, Carol was very creative. Let's yeah. just set our own business. I wanted to do stationery and cards. Loved it because I could just draw and just, you know, like that printed because I love print. And Tangible. Like that. Mm. Yeah, make things. And I kept saying, there's no birthday cards that I want. And, you know, that, and it's a huge market now. But back then I said, like, we could just set our own little online shop up and do little, you know, Shopify. And uh, so, yeah, I always kind of had aspirations to have my own business. I didn't know what scale or how I would go into it, but my dad had his own business and he really successful business. So I've always kind of known that. Um, and I hated, you know, that whole nine to five or nine to seven Paris, 
you know, every day, the routine, just the dictate, you know, you will do this and that's it. There's no scope for creativity. I kind of felt really um, stifled in the creativity. There was nothing that, you know, if you had an idea, oh, no, we can't do that. Why? You know, I hate no. I hate anybody saying no, you can't because, no, no, that's our solution or I want to find that way of doing that because, so yeah, that's what I love here, that we'll have an idea yeah, let's just try it. <laughs> I've got quite a, a couple of people that have done podcasts and said the same thing, like when they've had ideas. And it was, it was last week, actually, Terry, who's over in the North East, and he was working for uh, a company when he was younger, and he said he's got all these ideas, he wants to try it, and they're all saying, no, no, no. And then he thought, well, I could just do it yeah. myself. Yeah. And try the ideas, and know they're going to work, that kind of thing, isn't it? And yeah. when you feel like you're being held back, mm. just... Yeah, tomorrow line, I think, yeah really. exactly and then that's when your passion you know getting up in a cold wet morning you think oh I really don't want to go into work because same old same old yeah. whereas here oh I think we're still oh like can't we skip it into work that's what you want though yeah. isn't it mm-hmm. like you say you're at work for so long yeah day your week your life you may as well do something and go into a place yeah it doesn't feel like work no. to me. it actually no. doesn't not at all I, I keep doing stuff and like right, I must do some work now and you think but you have actually just been working for four well, hours in your business <laughs> you like it. but it's just so it doesn't feel like work so I'm, I must do some work now <laughs> mm. so then you both move back up and then so how did the conversation happen Seven issues to start this But it's two years ago. Two, yeah. two years ago. Oh, all right. We're only just two. And two. Really? Toddlers. Oh. Toddlers. Yeah. Um, it was July, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we were really good friends and I knew you were in marketing, we were, but we never really talked work, did we? Um, and then I went to work for a business here and worked there for a little bit and then they needed someone in marketing. And I said, I'm just the person. So I called you up and said, do you want to come for an interview? And Carol got the job. Okay. And then for another story entirely, we left there and we're just, I remember being out in the garden. It was a really hot summer, June or July, wasn't it? Two years yeah, ago. July. And I just said, let's just do it. Can I do some marketing for me? Yeah. I think it was a free, like she went back to her. So I had, oh, I had okay. a creative approach, but that was a freelance business. Ah, uh, right. So yeah, can I do marketing for me? Things. Yeah. Market me and let's, you know, you help me to market myself mm. so I can get more work. And so, all right, okay. And we'll just do it for a couple of months and see what happens. And that couple of months just turned into it. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I wasn't marketing me. I said, <laughs> Oh, that's interesting then, isn't it? So then what, what was kind of like, what were you thinking when? Well, I was thinking, oh, well, I'll just have to go and find another job, you know, because I left that place as well. And I was thinking, well, I'll help with you for a while whilst I look for work. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Where will I go? You know, what we're really interested in now? You know, just like, let's just sit back and... And then it was just a constant, well, Vicky, just, Joel, do you want to just do 50 50? You know, you come into the business, you know, it's a freelance now, but let's make it an agency and, and let's see if we can grow it. So we'll be kind of doing your work and what's to lose. You know, when you've got nothing to lose, you can go back to being a graphic designer. I can go and get a marketing role in, you know, one of the big organizations here and there's nothing to lose. So that's kind of what we went. There was no expectations, wasn't there? Yeah. There was no, which we definitely didn't think we'd employ people. I don't think I ever thought that until yeah. we got Debbie on. I was like, well, we need people now. <laughs> yeah, it's been very organic. And I think I was a little bit not reticent with the reason I didn't want an agency was because it can, it, you're working very closely together. And, you know, the last business I had was with a friend and we're still friends. But if you don't, if you're on the same page, you can ruin friendships. And I didn't want to do that with Carol and I, but within about three weeks, it was like, let's just do 50 50. We know we're, we work in the same way which is erotic erotic but no we get stuff done I think it's like organized chaos you know and then Debbie's come on board and organizes but I think we we have the same values we have the same vision we we want to help people and our clients so I think that's really helped and I I think it's strengthened our friendship not Mm -hmm. done anything differently we're only two years in and see what happens yeah I don't think either of us have got equals or anything like that you know we'll have an idea we generally have the same thing you know very similar and my goals, it's not to make money. That's not being able no. to drive it. And so I'm saying, I don't want to make money. What do you want? I don't want to make money. You know, I mean, obviously, you want, have to do that. you want to pay the bills, my mum, yeah. and our children to be happy. We want to build the legacy for them. You know, if they wanted to come into it all. But it's just something that we enjoy and passionate and, honestly, yeah, kind of give too much away because we just generally want to help everybody. Uh-huh. We've got this huge wealth of knowledge that we can share it. So that's how a driver is, isn't it? To just, and yeah, so we're nice to work. I think, I think, I think if it's any more than that and it was, our goal was money, I don't think we'd be skipping into work. No. 
because we just it's kind of just really enjoyable and so and I think that like one of one of people that I admire, Chris Joe, he always says he he's just profit is a bonus. Like he just it's a does product, it's a product. Kind of yeah. Thing, yeah. yeah, if you really, you know, really enjoy what you do. So I think I've met like in the selling printers, the people there were so money orientated because it was all on, you know, however it's yeah. Cares. And it, I think that's I just couldn't do it because it's like I I don't want that thousand pound handbag. It's not, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't inspiring me. So I think that's why we enjoy this, you know, because it's just like, well, our goals are the same, but they're not really money oriented. Yeah. I think that's the thing, me, when my first business is with a business partner and we just had like different ideas and things going forward. So that's when we split in COVID and stuff. We thought it's probably best to go out separate ways, but we don't talk anymore, you know what I mean? Right. But not like we fell out just because we've got nothing to talk about yeah. kind of thing. What was your, what was that your first? We had events and marketing right. as well. Um, and but I'm glad I did it with him at this time because we were only young, really 22. Mm. I mean, so I definitely would have failed if I did it by myself at 22. Yeah. But I'm mm-hmm. glad we ha- had somebody who was in it together. Yeah. So you can relate to the situation when we're not making any money, not signing any clients yeah. and thinking, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. At least you've got yeah. somebody else in it, whereas if you're by yourself, I would buy myself, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. But then yeah. when, I, when it was time to split, we made an, I'd made enough mistakes. We both made enough mistakes yeah. to go our separate ways and yeah. think that. He was more into like the events and the music and stuff like that. I was more into like, the business side, which is, which is fine, but like, it's being self aware, isn't it? To know we were very similar yeah. in a lot of ways. So it was like, what's the point? Yeah. When yeah. We're good at the same thing, kind of thing, may as well go separate ways. But yeah, I think that's hard. I mean, you know, we, I don't think we would have got as far if we didn't have each other because we kind of take turns to have sleepless nights. Yeah. And then the other one's, what's the other one? It's like, oh my God, I didn't sleep because of this is on my mind or, you know, something business eh? And then we just, you know, you've got support and, you know, yeah, you've yeah. always got that support. Yeah. You have that panic of, oh my God, we did the right thing. Well, how is this going to work? Or, yeah, you can kind of lean on the other person. Yeah. We both bring different things, don't we, to the party. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. And the, yeah, the ruthless, then tough one. And if he's the nice guy, you know. Good top back up. It's a free. I'm like, free. It's your vibe. I'll do that. I'll be yeah. lost. <laughs> So then how, how did things kind of progress from there? Then obviously after you know, the conversation go up 50-50, how things kind of spiraled to where they are today? I think it's a mix of us having a tiny plan. Tiny ones. Yeah. It's not too big. But you know what though? I think the way that we work and we're changing it because we're getting, a, we're, our team is growing, so people have to know what's in our head. For some reason, we just know what's in, in each other's head. We know what we're trying to achieve and then we'll do a million things at once and then it just happens. It happens. <laughs> and when we did a business plan, we had someone come in to help us. It just, it was drawn. It's a little draw, like a house, stick house. It's just people. It's a business plan. Yeah. Our business plan, we're going to take over this building. We've got two floors already. I think it's very visual. We just kind of, you know, visualize it and we're like, well, what do we need to do it? And we write it like a bit on list and say, right, you go off and do that. I'll do that. I'll come back in a month and. So we yeah. And that's it. There's no chat about it. It's just it's simple. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to yeah. simple, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. And when, when we needed a team, I'll say, oh, we need this person, should get that. You know, we always kind of, well, we need loads of people, but we just do like a two minute chat and then go, yep, yeah, that's fine. And what about the text? It's probably just like a bit of a WhatsApp. What do you think about getting into sign? Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> um, you know, and we are, this year we've done more, we, we've got processes in place and stuff so that. What's in our head is elsewhere for the team to understand. Yeah, it's so important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because otherwise they're lost. And I think, you know, Debbie has been great because we'll come in. This is, this is how I visualise the day. Debbie's sitting there with a list and a check, really calm, really slow. And then we like sp- sped up, like mm-hmm. flying around, doing stuff. And she's just still getting things done. So we're getting more Debbie's. Yeah, getting more Debbie. Be more Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Be more Debbie. It's a Debbie. Everyone needs a Debbie. Oh, everyone needs a Debbie. And I think, you know, after about six months, we realised that we didn't just want to create somewhere nice to work. We wanted, we, our vision started at, at kind of growing in the sense of, you know, we felt Carlisle, there's a lot of creative people, but it, it would be kind of like, kind of for themselves because of the panic that there wasn't enough work out there. And you know, a lot of people like we did left to go to cities and there's some great talent here. And also the businesses would go to agencies in London and Manchester thinking they were better. 
So we just felt actually that's quite a lot of stuff that we want to achieve. So we want to, you know, keep business here in Cumbria. We want to keep the talent here in Cumbria. So it's kind of grown to our vision being just the, all these rooms here being full of like the young graduates and young designers and like Max and Megs who have their own business, but they come in and work with us, but have a really nice creative space. So it's since we started, it's kind of grown into it being that, hasn't it? Rather yeah. than just an agency. Mm-hmm. Like it builds like a unit create, mm-hmm. isn't it? That's yeah. Cool. yeah. And just so utilising, yeah, when you know, like we use Max all the time, don't we? I'm making all for everything they're in, like literally every client we involve them and yeah. vice versa. So yeah. it's nice to have that. And reaching out to other people in the same sector, in marketing and design and, you know, just trying to create that community. Because the stronger you are, the more you can offer the bigger businesses here and yeah. keep them mm-hmm. local instead of going to Manchester and London. And as well, like people like that, can bring everyone up together, can't you? Mm-hmm. As well, that's one thing that I saw like when I was first. A lot, a lot of people would feel like they'd have to put you down maybe or like knock you down a peg just so they feel better. But yeah. It's a lot better if you can help other people out, bring them on the journey and everyone can grow together because there's plenty of business out there for everybody, isn't yeah. it? You yeah. know what I mean? There's thousands. I don't know how many businesses around the UK or Cumbria, but there's plenty. There's for plenty everyone. for everyone. Plenty. And I think, you know, the more you open your doors to people who do the same thing, you know, the, the more businesses come to you. You know, it's like where you get jewellers, you know, Hatton Garden or whatever, you get jewellers all on one street because mm. people all come to them. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're just stronger as a group, I think. And um, we've got yeah. some great partnerships, haven't we? Now yeah. that we're, we're working with a couple of boys that have got their own agency down. That's absolutely one, one of the brothers is in Barcelona, and the other one's in like Sheffield, and I've got Manchester City. They've got their own agency and uh, Circulate Digital, and they're, uh, they do all the like, paid advertising side of things. And that's the skill set, you know, that we can do, but we don't have that local talent here to run that. So mm-hmm. we've kind of, we can partners with them. Um, we've got somebody in Newcastle that does like the market research, like real proper research and we include her and their pair agency. So we're starting to build that lovely partnership, aren't we? A group of people that can help us offer our clients like everything. Mm. So instead of saying, oh, we just do brand to market it, we can now offer them absolutely everything to launch their business and promote themselves. So, you know, we're not trying to say, oh yeah, we do everything. We're like, oh, we're going to use these people for this, Max for the video, or Megan for this, you know, so we, yeah, can offer real good quality, can't we? So Perfect. hopefully more of those people will be here. Yeah. You know, so we can just, again, keep it all well, local. I think that's something I struggle with when I first started the marketing is that me and the business part of the town had to do everything ourselves. Mm-hmm. And the service wasn't that good. You that's, know, at least we were trying to do everything. Like you say, yeah. if you've got specialists in each yeah. department or whatever, you're offering a better service to the client's eye, then you want to win the race. Yeah, And totally. then you're helping everyone else out at the same time, so. Yeah. I wanted to, sorry, I wanted it to definitely be that honesty and not yeah. the, you know, you will go to London agents or whatever. Um, and they will, yeah, of course we can do it. And you need to get some service and you just yeah. think, well, that's yeah. not, you know, even the clients that have come back to us have come to us and said, you're so much better than X agency. You know, you're not, we're not over promising. We're not saying we can do everything, but we will find you the best people so that we can offer that service. Mm-hmm. Um, it won't be Ricky and I, we know our skill sets and. And the strengths, don't we? Yeah, and I think it just puts gives you a, like a, a, our industry a bad name. Sure. You know, like with uh, Carl said, we've had quite a few clients come back to us. They didn't choose us originally, usually because of budget, and they go somewhere else, and come back, and they've said, "Actually, can we come and use you?" But it's really sad that that's happened because they've gone somewhere where someone said we can do everything for you. And I get it. I get people panic and they feel like they they need the business. That's the only way to do it. But you've got to stick to your skill set and be on, like, you know, like be honest because at the end of the day, it's it's not it's not good feedback for yourself or the industry as a whole. So I think yeah, you know, design and and branding and marketing can have a bad name sometimes because people have had a bad experience with it. Oh. I can definitely agree with that. There are people that say, oh, being burnt by the age, and yeah. see whatever, but they don't trust them. <laughs> like yeah. Things. Yeah. Because it's, I think it's because there's all these like YouTube courses and stuff, but it's like, start your own marketing agency mm-hmm. and 10 grand a month in 30 days and you think, that's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to sign a client, but it's hard to keep them, isn't it? Yeah. You it's hard I mean? to do the right, the right work. You can do any work. It's like good design. Good design is hard to do. You can get all right design that the client doesn't understand what the difference is, but the results are totally different. And it's the same with marketing and things like that, isn't it? You know, if you, you should do a mediocre job. Then. Yeah, you can't. The can't. Everyone's got an Instagram account. Everyone has yeah. a person Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> but the client doesn't know any difference. 
you know, not say anything detrimental about the client, but it's not their world, is it? So they don't know the difference between good and the right way kind of thing or all right. So it's, they're always going to be burnt because they, they don't know any yeah. different really. I think it's like build back to communication, isn't it really? Because I think communication is the most important thing for me anyway, that clients don't need to know how to do the thing, but they need to understand how it works. Mm. Like and say. why. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I mean. We're doing this because, oh, it hasn't worked because yeah. this. We're going to try this instead, isn't it? So because if everything goes well, they think, oh, smash it, smash it. When it goes wrong, why is it going wrong? You're fired. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. And also saying, you know, a lot of the work that we do is not immediate. Mm -hmm. It's not instant. So all the you need results right now. Yesterday. That's what clients expect. Yes, Paying the invoice. Right, we're going to make 50 grand. <laughs> because knocking on my door, where's all the sales? <laughs> The website, you know, nobody knows about it. Yeah, and that's got give you ten thousand pounds into promotion. Oh no, but you did for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's because they see like these Insta posts or something like that, saying, you know, within a week I got five hundred thousand likes, and they say, why have we got all these likes? And like, well, they're not your audience for a start. They don't yeah. buy anything from me. So it's it's really hard. That's really hard because it is the hard earned money, um, and when it isn't tangible immediately, I, I get I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's what's the plan moving forward then, apart from taking yeah. over this whole building? The whole building? Bobby Knowles. He's retiring. We've told him five years he's retiring. He's retiring. He's retiring. He's retiring. He's retiring. That's where you are know, working with the university. We're hoping to get more graduates in. I think that would be so cool. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say there's a lot of creative people in University yeah. of Cumbria, but I feel like they think that there isn't opportunities. Yeah. In Cumbria, you know what I mean? When there is flows, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. There is a lot. You know, to be giving that platform. Yeah. It's an opportunity, isn't it? And we went to the university to speak to them. Like, oh, what are you going to do next? You know, would you consider staying in Carlisle? And like, what do you mean? Why would you stay? There's nothing here. And we're like, well, we have an edge. You know, would you be interested? Oh, no, you've got to go to Manchester or London. So it's that perception, isn't it? That until you, you know, it's good service is only in the big cities and not here in, in the north. And um, so you get to have this hustle, bustle of uh, yeah. creative, like every room. You want to be really busy. Creative people. Yeah. yeah. Doing it slowly though, it's, you can't, can't go too fast because the wise will be. We won't exist. Yeah. You know, if we, if we move it too fast, but yeah. Mm. It's a plan. So if somebody was listening to this or watching it, who would be the right kind of business or people to come to you? Like the ideal clients or customers, would you say? Oh. Any anyone with money? <laughs> <laughs> if there is, yeah. Well, who would you, you like working with? Or who's your preferred client to work with? Not slate Yeah, nice people. Yeah. Yes, we like you know we've had a lot of startups and stuff, and that's kind of I love that. That's like real satisfaction to see you know somebody come with an idea, or I've got to you know, time in a business just to walk my van, um, and then we come and we grant them, and they get the personality, and they, you know they go to market, and, and then just to see them watch them a year later, and they can't see smashing it now, and yeah, so that's nice. nice. That's a nice. Then that's kind of what makes it worthwhile. Um, yeah. We work with a lot of mark marketing departments, I think, for big organisations across the UK, and they're like under resourced. So they're a marketing manager themselves, or a marketing director, and they need just they haven't got the team, they haven't got the skill set within their team, so they need to outsource. So you know that's kind of where our whole we've got a team that can support you, and we're really proactive, aren't we? And agile that we can just if you need something, to, you know, kind of just work and we jump on it get the mm. everything created so we do have a lot of clients like that don't we yeah i mean when we don't do it's not a specific sector because you know when i had my last business and we had a business advisor and they said you need to niche into a specific sector all the time, all the time. All the time. Yeah. and i think that's right for some cases but you know for us and especially because we do strategy quite a lot as well the strategy is all about kind of finding out what the challenges are and the problems and they come up with the solution and i think a lot, and I've seen if you do niche down, which I don't think is an issue, you can be bogged down by that niche as opposed to looking at the bigger picture. So, you know, we're problem solvers really, and like design is about this much of the work that we do. So, the sectors is kind of any yeah, really. Yeah. And as yeah. well, like with businesses, around. massive businesses as well, don't we? So, yeah. Yes. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like a fresh set of eyes is always important coming in because they're in it all the time, aren't they? Yeah. They can't see the problem. So they've got red tape and they're, you know, bogged down by what the boss wants done by 6 p.m. And a lot of it, like, kind of the ideas as well, you know, come and say, oh, we need a flyer. Oh, why do you need a flyer? And we've always had a flyer. Mm -hmm. but have you got a plan? Have you got this? Have you got a brand? Have you got no, any of that? Have you got a website? And all, What's the flyer? You know, what is the purpose yeah. of that one thing that yeah. we see that you've always done? 
Mm-hmm. And they said, well, have you thought about X, Y, and Z? Oh, no, never yes. thought about that. Brilliant. You know, and they've helped with the marketing. That's when you see if it's grown to be yeah. a results for them. Mm-hmm. Just do. What are you seeing the best results from now? Mm-hmm. Just say, what kind of strategy or plans that you're doing is working quite well? I think the the ones that are hard that doesn't have that like return on investment ROI is the strategy work. Because I'm doing quite a lot of brand strategy. Okay. And I've been doing it for like small agencies like Harry Green, which is an architect's up to bigger ones, we've just done stuff for Peter Tyson, potentially doing a global one. Is that literally after every workshop I do and everything like that, everybody's just so excited. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, this is our business. And even if they don't own the business, they get so excited and then all of a sudden have all these ideas and then they're, they're starting to bound out of bed to get to work. That's why I like that. That's really, I really enjoy that bit. That's, I'm just like cool clients. So, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and he was saying, oh, we built this office space and gyms and everything in it and saying, this is where all the staff and employers want to come to get up and go to work to. You yeah. want, like, you've got a little bit in their staff, they're going to go to work. That would yeah. be positive ROI. In itself, you yeah. know what I mean? Because they'll be working harder and more efficiently, so it's quite cool. Yeah, it does have a big impact like that, doesn't it? But yeah. I think, you know, I don't know what would yours be. Yeah, I think... I don't know. Yeah. We don't spy, yeah. <laughs> I just don't I didn't prep for these ones. I was asking this as a selfish question for me. I was interested. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's just... Yeah. What's the, you know, once they know how to do it, it's passing that knowledge, you know, and explaining. Like, just so yeah, anyone can set up an Instagram account. This is it, right? Is it the right audience? Right. You know, you're not looking for likes. They're absolutely pointless. It's, mm. it's just educating them to say, look, these are the right metrics that you need to be following. You have built a plan. We could do all these beautiful branding and make you know, really stand out and things. But, you know, just looking at the metrics, like seeing what's working. And you don't have to have huge goals, you know. Even for a billion followers, it's just not. Mm. Sorry to, you know, burst that bubble. It's not going to happen in 2023. People care about that so much. And then oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. superficial and it's like, well, what is that? If I give you a million followers, what do you get? You, know, you can buy them. But are they going to buy from you? Are they going to come back? Are they loyal? Are they engaged? No. So, you know, when I look at the competitors and I show them and say, right, they've got to your 100 likes on that post or, or, or here's a post that you've done and they think it's great. And then, you know, there's like no engagement. It's just dead. And I think because it's not, you know, it's like looking at that content and just seeing what your customers want and every business is so different. What happens, what works for you does not work for somebody else. So just kind of, you know, forget about the competition, you know, look and understand what we're doing and be able to say, well, that will work or that's good or bad. Just focus on you. And if you get, you know, your 10 likes, but you, nine people buy from you, you are winning. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's those small goals that I think you just kind of bring people back because they just want, what do you know, say they want to be Apple? Oh, yeah. I just want to look like, I just want to be like Apple. I'm like, well, no, you're like a fitness company. Yeah. 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 Y
because we neither of us are telling them, but sure. you can tell when Carol starts slouching and rolling her eyes. <laughs> we have to. The thing is, half the meeting is just what you to, what you yeah. to. No, get into it. It's mm. like to you know, use that meeting. Can we just use that meeting time to do what we're going to talk about? Just yeah, do it. Really. And okay. then that's that really our, really productive, and I can move on to the next yeah. task because. It's the talking about that with just doing I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like doing in-person meetings. This is just my opinion. But like, say, by the time you drive to the place, you sit down, you get a coffee or a tea or whatever, oh, and then you chat, and then you have the meeting, and then you chat after. It's like, do you think I'll see you Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, fucking hell, if I did a, if I did a Zoom meeting, I've had about five <laughs> meetings by then, yeah. <laughs> just in and out and stuff like that. So that's why like a phone call or a Zoom meeting or whatever is great. But like you can have in-person meetings, but it has to be specific times, yeah. and so you can get on because everyone's busy out there. Mm-hmm. I think if it's a balance, like I, I like if I'm meeting people for the first time, mm. I like it in person. Yeah, because it's different. You get, I think you get kind of a stronger connection there. It's hard on on Zoom, isn't it? Oh, that's why I like doing the podcast in person. Yeah, to meet people yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And stuff. it's a great way for me to network. Yeah, because otherwise, I can't be asked to go to to speak to someone. Yeah, like whatever. It's a podcast. You meet people. Get content from it. It's like yeah, a yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, definitely. What do you reckon yours? Uh, well, <laughs> it is definitely been too nice. Do you reckon? Yeah, because I never thought it was a bad thing, but it is in business. Because I will Did you and break I'm, I'm be, I am and Vicky two point well this year. Yeah, it's just a kid being well, I'm gonna just tell them this and then go with it. And then sometimes the niceness is back. <laughs> I've just done it. I've been giggling an email and then the email goes on and she'll rewrite it and rewrite it. And then before you know it, it's like, you know, soft hooks at the end of it. Well, that wasn't brutal at all. No. And I, but I am better because I think, especially because freelance for a while, I, I just end up doing stuff going, I just do it for you and it's fine. Yeah. And I'll probably, probably end up doing a day as well. So I'll just do it for you for different clients kind of mm-hmm. thing and offer up too much and, you know, things like that. And if, if, yeah, I've had a couple of times to say, well, can you not do this? And it's like, well, it's not in the contract. All right, I'll do it. So it's not really good business kind of ways, is it, to be honest? Although, so then they come back to you and then their expectations are so yeah, yeah. both delivered. That's a huge learning curve. Yeah, and just, and I'm just full going, oh, Debbie, could you just do that? Because I really like so So, you know, and I'm going to no, you can't, because then they come back to you and they go, but you've always done that. You've yeah. always done all of these things. So then they kind of go, oh, I'm not happy with this service. Because you've always over delivered and now you're not over delivering. Yeah. So we had to like really think like we need to put our expectations on, you know, this is what you get. So you know, this is brilliant value, brilliant, you get everything. But if you want after this, you have to pay for mm-hmm. our time. Mm-hmm. And you're taking away from somebody else. If we just oh just do we just do and Vicky and I work till the end of most nights anyway, kids to bed and then start working. So then it kind of takes away from our family time because we're just wanting yeah. to constantly yeah. please. So I think we both, we were both exhausted with last yeah. year, just running to the ground and just getting a little tired. And this is what we, you know, we need to kind of just this drop. And I think what it was doing by doing like being too nice and ha- having those expectations from the client ended up being bad relationships yeah. because they, there was, wasn't that wall or the barrier. So they, you know, and they're all nice people and they didn't mean to, but they would take advantage. Mm-hmm. And then they would get annoyed because you'd be like, well, that's going to be this amount of money. Oh. So, you know, they get like quite shocked about that. So I think, you know, it's to keep the relationships strong is to just say, right, this is, we're getting on really well this business relationship. You need to value us like we value you kind of thing. So I still find that. I still yeah, find yeah, it we're still hard. Got, yeah, expectations. And you get, you get your life client. I know. I'll just do it. It's yeah, just, you know, time. Yeah. yeah, this is one thing, isn't it? But yeah, I sort of try to find the balance for that. I'm just in there. Well, then, if, yeah, I think most people do. But, but then on the flip side, you know, we have some great relationships with clients and people mm. because, you know, people like working with us and vice versa. So I think being nice is good. Yeah, yeah it's it's nice that's, your person, that's your person up there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's people work with people, don't they? Yeah. Really yeah. They like it. Yeah. Which I feel like sometimes, even though they may ask for more or expect more, they do it because they don't know the terms and stuff. Yeah. Oh, but some people will be like, I'm going to do this and they know, but well, you can kind of tell, can't yeah. if you do mention it, like, oh, I didn't realize it ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Then last thing, biggest mistakes. Or regrets, what do you reckon? I prepped for this, got me that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, is this personal? <laughs> it can be neither. Let's keep the personal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Either or, or both, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Mine was the biggest mistake 
A lot of people do say they've had no mistakes and no regrets because it's all learning, learning lessons. lessons. Learning. Yeah. Life. That's a great answer. We're talking about the podcast. <laughs> and we were saying that because it's led us here, but I think yes. Saint to come, mine potentially was my last business yeah. because it was with one of my really good friends, but we just liked different things. You know, he wanted to do design, graphic design for high end luxury. And that just has never bothered me. You know, I have the brands. I didn't even know who they were. And it'd be like Fendi. And so we had some really good design, design, like brands that we were working for. And I didn't like the arrogance of the people who work there. I, it just wasn't me. And so I'd always keep bringing in these little charities <laughs> and things like that. And I'd be like, that's not bringing the money. And so we started clashing. And I think when I had my daughter, I think that came at a good point because we probably would have carried on and then our friendship would have not survived, I think. Because we, yeah, we just, we just clashed in the way we ran our business. And I think, so to me, it was a learning curve. And luckily our friendship has survived. But I think it's just having your eyes open, going into business, because it is a hard thing to do. It's a lot of hard work, isn't it? It's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of stress. And if you don't start from a strong point, then it, it can it can ruin friendships, definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I said, that our friend, which is my first Mr. Pound, before, and we're, we had to do some jokes speaking about, like, mm-hmm. we didn't fall out, but when I think she was like, ways and stuff, which is like, is she? But I don't think I'd go to this to a friend again. No. Or the client as a friend. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that's definitely a tough reference. A couple of clients we've done work for and had to pressure you with that. Just, I had one and yeah. Yeah, we're not friends anymore. Oh, no. oh nightmare, yeah. It's, all of the yeah. friends with that was but I kind of say be will look after you. Yeah. You know, put you in touch and you'll be in good hands. But yeah, can you do I'm reading the emails and the five months mm-hmm. because I don't want to be yeah. involved in that side yeah. of things. It's like I say, for me, it's the expectations thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You lay out the expectations and then it gives you it's, it's a friend's girlfriend. And then it's like when they overstep and you try mm-hmm. and say to them, yeah. this is, and it's like, no it's respect. Not, yeah. yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Sorry, what, what was your was it regret? Sorry. Regret, yeah, it'll be a regret. Same, you know, working in Paris and uh, working in London and I had the head office in Paris and several times they asked me to move to Paris. And every time I went, no, 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 no. So it's kind of more of a what if, you know, like mm-hmm. what would just happen? What would my career pass it look like then? You know, would it, would they have promoted me faster, higher up in the company? Probably especially speaking French, because I was just like, what learning? No, no. Just Believe it or not, I actually lived in Paris when I was younger, a baby. I'm Did you? My dad had a job over there. And mum and dad both learned in French, yeah. Right, like, yeah. Oh, looking back, I think so. I they didn't learn it. French, but yeah, I just wasn't too interested. <laughs> and when we were not, sorry, when we were naughty, me and my brother were younger, they used to speak to French in Egypt. Oh, so yeah. that's so a good like, thing. Whatever, I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're yeah. in trouble. Yeah, so people are for regret, like, kind of, what I should have jumped. I don't know what it was, you know, settled in London, friends, London life is brilliant. Yeah. I was so much fun. Um, and then to think to move, and it was a conversation I'd have with my boyfriend. And I'm just like, oh, should we go? Shall we not? And then I was like, oh, just, just like, you know, just comfortable, I think. Whereas I should have just said, yeah. That's a big thing, though, the language barrier. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing to learn. I think that could be quite scary. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we we'll move tomorrow now. Yeah. Well, yeah. She wants to be wet in the warehouse. She's going to work in the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. 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 I'll go to Spain, you see. I'll go to Spain. I'll go to Marbella. Yeah. yeah. I've got a friend in Marbella that hates October. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. Did Barcelona uh, off this week, Logan? Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm I did think, <laughs> yeah. I did think about moving to Barcelona a long time ago. I wish I'd ha- I had. But yeah, we can always open. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. What would be the Spanish translation of that, do you reckon? Touch. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, it was Chris. Catalan, wouldn't it? I don't know what point it is. I should work out. Yeah. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so where can everyone follow you, find you, get in contact, all the plugs, other people? Bye. Social medias, even yeah. LinkedIn, mm-hmm. or websites and all that kind of Websites, uh, creativebooks.com. Is it? Yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> never that with my car with the com. And then Instagram is the Creative Butch and Facebook's the other Facebook well. Just Creative Butch. Yeah. yeah. I'm LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah, I want names. And then, yeah, I've got a LinkedIn page, which is just Creative Butch. Simple, simple. And, and it is one word. Oh, yeah. So, the brand. Uh, one word. Yeah, I've like, been it before. <laughs> well, so you went, you're right now somewhere in the actual the cruise. It's all one, one word. word. Yes, okay, there's no right. gap in it. I won't get that wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> right, everybody, if you've been watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment your favorite part. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, make sure to follow the podcast and leave a five star review. And we'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.